guys around the house. In this video, I'm going to show you how I rendered this chimney breast behind me from something that looked like this, which was old Victorian red brick in not a particularly good state, and rendered it to something that looked like this. And then finally, with a coat of paint, something that looks like this behind me. I'll show you the mix I used for the scratch coat, the mix I used for the final coat, I'll show you the bonding agent I used to help the render adhere to the wall. I'll show you the different methods I used to apply the render to the wall, including using a piece of batten to freehand some render down a straight edge like that. And finally, I'll show you some of the problems I encountered along the way. Trust me, there were a few of those. So with old masonry like this, especially from the Victorian era, you're going to be dealing with a lot of the old black lime mortar, so there's going to be a lot of loose debris and dust on the wall. So the first thing you need to do is give this a good clean. Now if you're outdoors, you can do this by giving it a good scrub with a brush, and then you're going to need to give it a good wet down. Now if you're indoors like me, is what I've done to save a mess is I use the good old Henry Hoover, and I've been right over all of this. You can see that black mortar there? That's quite solid there, that stuff, but there was a lot of loose debris on the top, and I took about half an hour cleaning all this off before I started this video, just to make sure that all the loose debris and anything that's likely to cause my render to detach is off the wall. So next important thing to do now is give this a good wet down. Now you need to wet the masonry you're going to render onto to make sure that it doesn't absorb all that moisture out of your render straight away. By getting this nice and damp, it just reduces the absorption. Now, what I tend to do, if it's an old wall like this, I'm going to give it a good soak in now before I even mix up any mortar. Let's get it nice and wet so it's got that, that moisture in the masonry work or in the brickwork, in all the, um, the joint work between, because I've got modern cement in there and we've got the old line mortar. Let that soak in a bit while I mix up some mortar. And then when I come back, I'm going to wet it down again. Now, I'm using a brush and a bucket of water. Now, probably what's better, I haven't actually got one knocking around here at the moment, is the little pressurised um, spray hand bottles. They're really good because you can just spray that all over the wall. Um, a brush is good for getting into the, the nooks and crannies. The, the only problem is with just using a brush is you don't get that even sort of coating. And what you can do is take the water like this, dip it in your bucket and just flick the water on like that. That's one way to get it over your wall and it does work. And then you can just sort of go over it like that. The problem you find is with flicking a brush around is you end up with water all over your fresh plaster in the room. So it's entirely up to you really. Just get it wet, give it a soak in and we're good to go. You'll be amazed with this. I'm absolutely soaking these bricks with water and they dry within seconds. So just goes to show they haven't seen any moisture for years and years. And it's probably a bit dark, but this is where I was just soaking up. That's going up to the ceiling there. And you can see, look at that. It just absolutely soaked that brick and look at those. It feels dry already, absolutely mad. So according to what substrate you're going on to, whether it's in poor condition or good condition, you may want to consider putting in a bonding agent. And when I say bonding agent, I just mean something that helps the render stick to the wall. Now you can get different types. You get things like SBR, which can be added to your render mix, and that just helps it stick to the wall. Or you can add other things, there's like blue grit and things like that, which you basically brush or roller onto the wall, and it goes off and it creates like a rough, sort of sandy texture basically, so you've got a nice rough surface to render onto. Now in my example, my bricks, uh, they're all right actually, they're a little bit rough, so it's probably not a bad surface to go onto. They are quite old, so you've got to be a bit careful that it doesn't absorb it up too quick and, and crack, but I am going to go with a more traditional method, and I've used it before inside the walls of wood burners and things like that, and I've never had a problem with it cracking, and it's always stuck to the old Victorian bricks, so that's what I'm going to go with, obviously only time will tell. For that, is what I'm using is a mix of four parts sand to one part Portland cement to half a part hydrated lime and that's for my first coat or the scratch coat then my second coat I'm going to go five parts sand I'm going to go one part Portland cement to one part hydrated lime the other thing is a lot of people say you have to use plastering sand mixed sometimes with sharp sand things like that I'm actually going to use builder's sand which is quite um, contentious or controversial a lot of people will moan and say you shouldn't use it I've never had a problem with it I quite like working with it so I'm just using the four and five parts building sand here, so there we go. You know, tell me in the comments below if you think I'm wrong, but I've never had a problem doing it this way. Now the hydrated lime, like I just mentioned, adding that to the mix makes it more workable. It makes the mix more breathable. The other thing is, I've got a wood stove in here. The other one's an open fire on the one side, so as that goes up, you are going to get extremes of temperatures. And by being more flexible, it means that as the bricks heat up and cool down, you can quite often get shrinkage and then you get cracking in your render. By using the hydrated lime, it just stops it cracking. And like I said, I've done it on the inside walls of my wood burner downstairs, and I've done it for friends. 
Um, and it, it always seems to work. I've never seen it crack and I've been back and had a look. So it seems to stand the test of time. So that's the option I'm going for. Now the hydrated lime, not to be confused with hydraulic lime. Hydraulic lime is used with sand on its own and that is used in more traditional mortars and that will cure and set on its own. Hydrated lime won't set on its own. It does need to be mixed with Portland cement in order for it to go off. One other thing to note is when you look by here, this chimney breast is, it wasn't built particularly nicely. You see some old Victorian chimney breasts and they look absolutely beautiful. Lovely and symmetrical. They go right to the top, nice and smooth. This one's all over the place. So by rendering it, I'm just gonna actually follow the contour of the chimney. I'm not gonna try and hide the fact that it's messy. I'm gonna try and do it as smooth as possible, but run with the shape of the chimney, because at the end of the day, that is the character of the house, so that's what I want. When you get to here, you can see this lip here, and it drops down over this side. It's not in particularly good condition, so it's what I'm going to do is possibly use three coats of render at the top. When I do these two side bits now, I'm probably gonna pack this a bit, fill it up, just to try and smooth it in so it curves up the same as we go across the chimney. I can scratch that, and then when I do my actual first proper scratch coat, that can go and run over smoothly, allowing the final coat to go on. Because whilst I want to follow the contour of the chimney, I don't want steps and messy lumps and bumps everywhere. We're going to try and blend it in and up that wall. Now before I get started, I just wanted to show you one other thing, and that's these outside corners. If you've got nice straight walls and you want a nice straight line, Probably your best option is to use some render or angle bead. This is the thick coat bead and the way to stick this to the wall really is to put either first of all your scratch coat on, add a bit of surplus on the corners and then you can just bed that into the scratch coat and once you've got it nice and plumb or level or in this case just where you want it you let it go off and then by the time you come back to do your final coat as long as you don't render right up to the bead you want to try and keep it just below this corner so you've got some room to put in your final coat up to this corner bit here, then that's all you would do. Your other option is, if you were, you're a beginner and you're a bit uncomfortable doing that, is just mix up a small bit of your mortar, just apply that to the corners and just bed this in first of all. And then the one advantage you've got to that is if you bed in your beads first with nothing else, when you put your coat of render on, you can kind of use a straight edge or something just to run off these corner beads here. So that's, that's another option. But in my case, which is the third option, because some of my chimney is really wonky, I'm actually gonna do it like freehand. I'm gonna use a piece of timber. Now is what you do with this, basically wet your piece of timber so it doesn't stick and absorb the render. And then if I was doing this wall first, for example, you would just place that under there, the depth you want, bit of water on it, render up to that, and then you shuffle that up slightly like that, pull it away, and you should be left with a nice thickness of render. You can let that go off and then you can basically do your other coat of render up to that one using that as your straight edge. Now, like I said, this looks pretty straight here, but I'm gonna show you this wonky one on the other side and this is the reason I'm gonna be using a bit of timber. So if you look at this side, you can see it curves right down at the end and as you work your way up the wall, it does exactly the same. So it's no good having this straight bit of angle bead on there because if I try to do that there, Look at the height that that's holding off in places. Now, whilst you could pack that up and fill it out and do a really straight sort of chimney breast, what's the point? Because it's not straight anyway. So I want to show the character as it is. So in order to curve with the chimney breast, I've really got to do it freehand. So by using this piece of timber, I'm doing the top of the chimney breast first. So I can just hold that on this angle. I'll raise it up about 10 mil. I'll render up to this piece of timber and then I'll move it down for the bottom bit like that. Now because I'm only mixing a small amount of mortar to start with, I'm just gonna use the bucket trowel and I'm just gonna do this by hand. Obviously if I was doing a larger amount, I'd use the cement mixer. So what I just did there was basically doubled up my mixture. So I've done eight sand. So when I said four to one to half, I'm now gonna do eight to two to one. So this is my Portland cement. Now that there is actually only about half, so I'm gonna to have to do another half so it doesn't go everywhere. So that is only really one there. So I need another two of those. There we go, that's quite a decent size one. We'll go just a little bit more. And there's my hydrated line. Try not to breathe that in. If you think you will, then stick a mask on. Like I said, I'm just mixing this by hand for now, dry. I'll start adding some water in a minute. 
Now time to add some clean water. And we'll just mix this in now until we get a nice creamy mix. So there's my mix, possibly a touch on the wet side at the moment, but I've done that because it's a really hot day, the bricks are drying out, and if it was standing around for a bit, it gives it chance to, to go off a touch without going too hard. You're not going to be able to see a lot here. Um, I'll have to show you when it's done, but there's a few dips, so I'm going to be filling those out a bit first. So who knows? Maybe I won't even have enough to to do this side of the wall. I haven't rendered for a while, so you know my um, measurements are all a bit out. And you'll see, although there's different techniques for doing this, you know, or recognise ones if you like. So all I'm doing here is just taking it off with the end of my trowel in this bit because it's an awkward angle. I'm just flipping it over, chuck it in and smooth it down. You'll see me doing more of a normal technique when I get the, the face of the chimney breast later. I've wedged the camera in so you can have a look. And basically, you can see I've been getting a render in and that line just allows you to spread it. Go a bit further at the top there, I've actually just flung that up there because it's a really tight corner. So I'm going to see what I can get in now with a trowel on my left hand. Even though I'm right handed, we'll give it a go. This is where I'm going to have to resort to the old decorator's knife. So now I'm just going to show you how this bit of timber works on the edge. So I'm going to try at least. Obviously I'm in a tight corner here, so not ideal, but I'll be able to show you on the other corners anyway in the edges. So I'm going to get my piece of timber, I'm going to wet it down first. Just like that with a brush. And obviously if you had easier access, you can just put it on with your trowel and straight out. I'm dumping it up there first so that I got an excess and then I can drag it across. And then you want to kind of put this piece of timber slightly raised off the wall, the depth you want. And then Slide that away and you're left with a nice edge like that. You see, it's only the scratch coat, so I don't need to be too fussy. Just to give you a closer look, you can see how using that wet bit of timber, look, you can take off the edge. And it's, it's not a bad edge on that actually, but by doing it in stages as well, if it does curve, you can kind of work with the chimney if that's what you want to do. If you want a straight line, it still works. So what we're going to do now is let that to go off a bit, or leave it to go off a bit, I should say. We'll stick a scratch on that in a minute with a scarifier. So here's the scarifier. I mean, you can use anything to do this really, but this is uh, purposely designed for this job. But we're just going to run that across in slight curves just to give a, a rough textured finish for when I go over it with the final coat. One of 
thing I forgot to mention was I was messing around quite a bit then. This is the most difficult bit of the chimney for me to do because of that tight corner there. But I just took the blade out of my speed skim tool just to get up in that corner. I also used this as well just to get in. It's just one of my building trowels, a really small one, like a pointing trowel really. I just got that up in that little gap there to fill back in with cement to make sure I filled all the gaps so or mortar not cement if you want to see a review of the speed skim I've actually done a review of that in another video when I plastered this loft so um, I'll put a link to that on the screen now if you want to watch that and we got what I said earlier up here I'm just going to put a little bit of my leftover render in here just to fill the gap a bit then each coat I do or each wall I'll just add a little bit up here if I've got any left over save over mixing it Okay, so a few days have actually passed now. We did the one bit in the corner. I didn't really have enough to mix. I had a few other things to do. Anyway, since then, I've been and got one of the bottles I was talking about with the pressure pump. So this is going to be perfect to spray the wall. And it's really what I should have had handy in the first place. This is only about five quid. I'll put a link to one of these in the description section below. Just screw that up tight. Get a good pump like that and lots of pressure in it. By there, you've got this flick switch. So if I hold that down, flick that switch forward, it just holds it in place, saves your thumb a bit. And you can also twist this little brass nozzle on the end. You see you get a bit more streamlined there if you want. So I might give that a quick splattering. I want to just get in those joints because all those um, old line mortar joints, they're the ones you've got to try and soak. But look, you can see it's not even dripping on my floor, yeah? That's how dry this chimney is. There's something I didn't mention. If I was doing this on an outdoor wall, I'd quite gladly use the hose pipe. Get the end of your... Um, you know, like hose lock, do the end spray a bit, turn it around, so you've got a nice wide spray, just saturate that wall, let it drip everywhere. I'm going to be a bit careful here, I've got the floor a bit wet now, but I've got my sheets down, but obviously you don't want to get the floorboards too wet, so I'm trying to be a bit careful, hence I'm using the sprayer. And so what we're going to do now as well is mix up a bigger batch of mortar, but I'm going to do it in my wheelbarrow by hand, so you can see me doing that. Now, usually I would do this in a mixer if it was a large amount, the mixer's with my brother Big Pace, by the time I go down and get the mixer, Bring it up to the house, I may as well have just mixed it by hand or, or with a shovel or spade in my wheelbarrow. So I'll show you how to do that now. So I'm outside, got my wheelbarrow for mixing in. I got a watering can to add the water. I'm going to use a bucket to measure out my units. Remember we're just doing a scratch coat here, so the mix I'm doing is one Portland cement to four building sand to half hydrated lime. It's when you get to this point that you think maybe 20 minutes to go and get the mixer would have saved me an hour mixing this stuff by hand. It's too late now, I've started, so I'll finish. And I've also, I think, just got a thorn in my bum from the rose brush. Okay, so if you look at that, it looks a touch wet. Now, that's partly where I'm hand mixing it. All the water's sort of rising to the top, so you can mix that in a bit in the bowl now. The other thing is I have done it ever so slightly too wet because I know I've got to get this into the tubs now, up into the loft. I'm going to give the wheelbarrow a quick wash because I think it's about to rain, so I want to put that away. Give me a chance to get up and then get it on the wall. So it will start to dry out a touch. If I do a really dry mix now, by the time I get up there, it's going to be really hard to get on the wall. And also, you've seen the suction on that wall. It's so dry, the moment you put this on, it's going to try and draw all the moisture out. So if the mix is already dry, it's just going to fall off the wall. It's not going to adhere to the wall. So. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Right now I'm sweating buckets and I'm starting to think I should have got a mixer and employed a labourer because uh, doing all this is hard work. But there we go. It's part and parcel of the job, so it's not a bad thing for you to see this if you ever have to mix anything by hand. Right, so I've got my mix here. Like I said, it is a touch wet really, if I'm honest. It should be a bit drier, but it's given me a chance to get it up here, tidy up, clean away, and I miss the rain, which is a bonus. Now with this, like last time, I'm just going to scoop it off at the top of the trowel to start with and just try and get some in there right at the top. You can 
see there, I'm just throwing that up to get it in that gap. I mean, that's not a, I would say, a recognised technique, but people do throw render on, and I'll flatten it in in a minute. I can get that right at the top, quick flick of the trowel like that, and up it goes. Then I'm going to push that into the cracks I want. So hopefully, by what you're seeing here, there's no specific way always to do rendering. Yes, it's nice to have a flat wall. You start at one end, you work from uh, right to left with rendering, the opposite to plastering. The idea is you keep pushing in a thicker layer, which you can scrape down later. But in all honesty, when it comes to this, just get it on and get it flat. If you've got a nice even coat, that's all that matters. Um, this wall, I forgot to mention, I didn't actually film just now. I just gave this another quick spray, but not too wet because my render's quite wet anyway. Get the general idea there's a lot of bumps in this so i'm putting quite a thick bit of render in there then i'm going to smooth it off flat so obviously you can have some bits which are 10 mil deep some are bound to go deeper because of the way the bricks go so once i've done that we can scratch it off and then get on with the other bits so i'll be back in a minute because i think as all you can see there is shadow my elbow and possibly occasionally the back of my head which let's face it probably better than seeing the front of my head but neither is good i thought it might just be worth showing you something here that rendering is actually quite forgiving. So, a lot of people get het up about how to trowel it on and that. I'm gonna show you now how you can do this with a bucket trowel. So, if you get your render, just slap it on if you wanna get it on. And actually in gaps, I guess, to be honest, it's a lot quicker than using a trowel. So, get it on like that. And as long as you get that into the brickwork, you can just use the back of the trowel. I mean, rendering is a lot more forgiving than plastering because you can really alter it even when it's going off, to be honest. It's not that difficult. And you can bring it back with a bit of water, but generally, as long as you catch it in time, you can shape it up using your float later. So, you can see there, with that, just get it on, and this is the back of my bucket trowel, because it doesn't have to be a really fine trowel. We can just do that, smooth it in, and it means you can just throw it on and smooth it in, all with the same trowel if you want. And to be honest, on the backs of these chimney breasts, or the top of them, I should say, um, it's probably actually quicker to do this, and then I'll trowel it off then, in a minute, when it's drying off a bit. Keep leaving that latch on, keep spraying the wall and putting it down and spraying my ceiling everywhere. So those undersides are a bit of a pain because uh, gravity is getting the better of me and there's bits of mortar dropping down. So what I've done is put as much on as I can. Where there's the odd gap that needed filling, I've sort of pointed the deeper gaps. I let those go off a bit, added a bit over the top. There's a there's a few bits that need filling really, so what I'm going to do is effectively a second bit of the scratch coat when it dries off. I'll try and patch in because then it's going to have 
bonded render that it'll be able to attach to in the gaps. So it'll sort of help it sit in place really, rather than it just trying to slump off. So with a little bit that I got left now, I'm just gonna carry on filling this um, top of the chimney up. But you can see how surprising, we had a good wheelbarrow full there, and it's all that's done is the one side of the top of the chimney breast, and then the two, two undersides, you know, and a little bit left over here, so. The other thing I just did was spray this again to wet it, because where you've got big voids with the lime water, that's the problem, you've got big deep gaps there, 10, 15 mil deep, and then it hits that really dry old lime water, and you put your, your fresh water in, it just immediately dries it, it won't bond, it tries to fall back out, so anything that sticks to that isn't going to stay to the walls, so you want to make sure it's nice and wet, and pack it in first, and if need be, go around, fill the gaps first, like I'm doing here, and then eventually we'll go back over it at the end, at least you know you've got a nice solid um, bit of render to stick your final coat to then. So my advice is stick to rendering nice, flat, fresh block walls, not all dirty, awkward chimneys with silly angles. Right, now interestingly, this brick is really hit and miss at the moment. So tomorrow I might actually go and get some SBR or some blue grit, um, just to give it a bit of purchase, because the top of the chimneys, and I know it's flat, it's not underneath, obviously you've got gravity working against you here, but... There's places where it bonds straight to the brick and there's places where it just it doesn't seem to want to take, which is quite strange. Usually it's fairly consistent when you're on brickwork, I guess. But anyway, you can see there, it's a good example. We had a big patch earlier, pull off, and now you look at the rest of it, I've just tapped it. And I've been checking in areas and it's held on solid, it's really good. But there it came straight off, so it does make me a bit nervous. But anyway, I'm going to scratch this now, I'm going to leave those gaps. We'll put a bit of the blue grit or um, SBR in those gaps in the morning but these are the real problems you come up against sometimes let's get a scratch on this and hope nothing falls off you can see i had a similar problem on this side the issue i had here there was a few really deep holes actually on this side where the brickwork was slightly out and the lime mortar was deep inside the crack so i had to fill a few of those and then go over the top so where are any problems? I've left it for now and again, I'm going to do the same. I'll fill those tomorrow, then we can put a scratch on the bits we, we patch up and then hopefully by the time we come over it with the final coat, we'll have a nice um, scratch coat. But I mean, this is the whole point of having a scratch coat at the end of the day, is that your final coat is the bit you see. And if you've got any bits like this that you need to iron out and, and make sure they're firm on the wall, you do it now, basically, in the scratch coat. So it doesn't matter if you have to do it in two or three three different bits you know sometimes you can build it out and do three or four layers if you've got really deep bits to do and on this side you'll notice as well i didn't do the edge bit this was playing up a bit so i thought i'm going to put the timber on tomorrow and fill up that extra bit and again i'll probably put a bit of sbr on there right so it's actually a few days later now as always i have to do a few other jobs so i've left that and now i'm going back to it so anyway i had a little think and i thought i'm going to get some sbr so this is what I bought here, and this is the, the Seeker or Seeker Bond SBR, and this can be used in a few different ways. First of all, you can mix it a little bit like PVA if you're doing plastering. So you can mix it one part of the SBR to about two or three parts water, and this can then just be rollered or brushed onto the surface. You leave it to dry, and when it goes a bit tacky, that's when you want to get your first coat of render on. Now the other option is you can make um, a kind of slurry, and it's what you do with that is you mix the SBR, or as it says on the bottle, with one part SBR to two parts Portland cement. This creates a wet slurry, and then you can literally just paint this onto the surface you're going onto. So what this does is creates like a nice sort of rough surface Surface, so it just gives you a little bit of a, a, a gritty bond to put your first coat of render onto. And when you're making a slurry, you should put your coat of render onto the slurry before it's completely dried off. The other thing you can do with the SBR is just add it into your mortar mix. And if you look at the directions on the back of the tub of the SBR you've got, it'll tell you what to do. It does sort of vary slightly according to what strength you want. It does generally suggest to add quite a lot of this to your mortar mix, which personally I don't think you always need to do, but it really does depend on the surface you're going onto. Now, of course, the other thing you could do is a combination of two or three different methods so you could apply the SBR to the wall in the first place and then you could add some to your mix to go onto the coat of SBR. So I'm not going to go for the slurry mix but I am just going to mix this one part to three parts water in a bucket. I'm just going to apply it with a brush, get it in all the little nooks and crannies all over that chimney breast and then while it's drying off we're going to come down here I'm going to get a, a mortar mix on. We're going to do the same mix as last time um, and then hopefully when we apply that that should bond a bit better to the brickwork and then once we've got our scratch coat complete 
then we can go over with a final coat and we should have no trouble at all with that bonding. And obviously this is just an example of how you can actually adapt what you're doing throughout the job. It's not always um, straightforward to be honest with you. Um, if you do this all the time there's a good chance that you probably would have turned up with the SBR and just put that on in the first place. I tried to avoid that because I thought there was no need um, but as we found out I was wrong. So I'm just going to add the SBR and then we just add the water. Now I'm trying to do one part of SBR to three parts water. Now I'm just going to stir this around using my brush. Now we're going to go upstairs and apply this to the chimney breast. drying off I'm gonna go and put on a mix of mortar. Now because I want to get on with this today and mix up a, a big load without wasting too much time I've got the mixer up here now behind me so I'm gonna be using that. I'll be using buckets to actually measure out the ratios of my uh, materials and again just for, for reference the scratch coat I'm doing four parts sand to one part Portland cement to half hydrated lime. So I have two buckets of sand. To make the ratio work, I'm going half a bucket of cement. And then I got quarter of a bucket of hydrated lime. And I'm gonna add water slowly to the mix until I get the right texture. So I've got my mix, I didn't take long. Now obviously you can put more in the mixer if you want. This mixer's a little bit volatile if you put too much in. So I'm gonna do another batch now, get it going. I'm gonna take this lot up, get it on the wall. And hopefully when I come back down, the other batch will be finished and so on. And there it is. So with the shovel, I've just taken all the mortar, I put it in a couple of tubs, I've got it up in the loft. And there's one point to make as well. If you can get yourself a good labourer that does a good mix and he's willing to mix it and carry it up to you to the job, then even better, because I'm already knackered. I haven't even started rendering yet, so there we go. Now generally, if you've got a square wall and you're rendering, the advice usually is that you start on the right, if you're right-handed, put it in, and as you go to the left, you're thickening the render, you're going along, you're pushing into the bit of render you've already done. So you start there, up and over, up and over, like that, keep going. To be honest, on a chimney breast like this, it's a bit rough. I'm gonna be probably putting bits where it needs thicker amounts of render, then I'll be going back over it. So I'm not gonna be so systematic, if you like. See there, when I'm just flicking it on, it's actually gripping better. Because what you find is when you use your trowel this way, it's sliding over the gap sometimes because it's so bumpy. So I'm going to try slapping it in like that, and then once we've got a good coverage, I'll go over it with the trowel. What you'll see here is, because my chimney breast is so uneven, I put this on a bit thicker than you necessarily normally would. Um, if you've got a flat block wall, obviously you do two nice um, even coats. So your first coat would be a bit thicker, but it'd be uh, the same all the way across and the same with your second coat. With this one, where I've been throwing it in, I've been filling all those chunky gaps. So remember here, there are parts where it's a bit thicker. So I'm not gonna play with it too much. I'm gonna let it go off now and we'll scratch it up later. The important thing is, is just to make sure before it does go hard, that you get the rough sort of level that you want. So you can see here, what I'm trying to do is go up and where my chimney went back, do a, a nice even curve. So all the way chimney, across the chimney breast, it'll go up, curve in, and then up. And uh, that's the look I'm after anyway. So I'm back with another mix of mortar, exactly the same mix, obviously, because it's still the scratch coat. I'm gonna get as much of this on as I can now. I've got a feeling I'm going to need to do one more mix before I finish. As you can hear, I'm knackered because I'm up and down the stairs from the garden. That's what I'm mixing up. Um, yeah, same technique. I'm going to flick it on. seems to be best. It's throwing it right into those mortar joints then. If you use the trowel, it seems to be brushing over these joints because they're so deep. So what's happening is, is every brick width, you've got this bit that's not adhering to properly. 
and it's tending to slump and want to fall out. So by slapping it in, leaving it there for a few seconds or a few minutes, it's getting a bit of a bond, then you can go over it with a trowel. That seems to be working. So again, sometimes you've just got to adapt your technique as you go along and uh, sort of play it by ear. But it seems to be working at last, but I've got to be honest, it's a bit of a nightmare. I'm just going to wet it up a little bit as well. So you can see that side's roughly done now. I'm going to move on to the other side, but it's still a little bit wet to put the scratch on it. So I'm going to leave that, carry on with this side, and then we'll come back to it to put the scratch on. I might even float it down a bit as well, just to smooth it out. I'm a bit worried at the moment with it being a bit wet. It might pull it back off the wall. I'm just going to give the wall a quick wet because it's extremely warm today. When it's really warm like this and your mix is, you know, it's drying out a little bit, don't be afraid just to splash a little bit of water in it off your brush just to keep it moist. That's exactly what I'm doing. And I'm also adding a little bit of water you just saw then back to the um, back to the wall with that little bit of SPR mix. mix hopefully for today I've just done. I don't want too much but I'd like to have a little bit left over just to patch up a few bits that uh, need filling in a minute. You can see here, these bricks, for whatever reason, are taking the render a lot better, so when I'm trowing it on, it's staying put. So there we go, that bit was an absolute pleasure to render, and I just did that in about two minutes, so just goes to show, doesn't it? Different substrates, different mixes, it's just one of those things. Um, I thought this would be okay, but it turns out most of the bricks are a real pain, but there we are. That mix was lovely there. Um, I did add a little bit of SBR to the mix on that one, and the bricks do seem a bit better on this side than that side, so I don't know why. I don't know if that's something to do with the use of the chimney years ago, possibly salts in the bricks, things like that. Don't know. Now, this is probably being a bit fussy. You don't always need to do this on a scratch coat. You do it on the final coat, but I'm going to use my float anyway quickly, go over it and just make sure I've got it roughly level before I go over it with a scarifier and give it a scratch. And then if you've got a few dips, just put a little bit of your mortar on and you can use this to rub it into place. If it's a bit wet, let it dry and go back over it in a few minutes. So literally like that. The beauty of cement render is you can obviously let it go off a bit and then when it's going a bit stiff that's when you can use things like your float or your trowel just to take edges off. Now I've not been too fussy on the corners here. I slapped it on, it overhung a little bit and I've just used this just to do that top edge straight. Now although we got a few little bits there, little chunky bits missing, that's fine because when I do my final coat I'll fill in all those gaps and as it goes off I'm just going to use this to round the edges. I don't want a really square edge, I'm just going to sort of curve them over to try and make them look a bit more natural. So I can show you what I mean here. Where I've done the render and it's over topped this top wall here, I can now go over with this while it's going off and either use this to sort of flatten it down or you can possibly use your trowel just to cut it. I'm going to use this to push backwards that way. 
you can see how you can start to get a much straighter line then and then you can use that on your final coat as your, as your guide really. So there we go, that's all done, you can see the scratch coat all across the front. We've got scratch coat up underneath there if you can see that and over the top. So, so what I'm going to do now is let that go off. I'll come back up tomorrow then and hopefully we'll get the final coat on. It's the next day and the render on the chimney has gone off lovely. So now let's get on our final coat mix and for this mix I'm going to do five parts sand to one part cement to one part hydrated lime. And because I don't think I quite need that much in one mix and my mixer to be honest with you is a bit worse for wear and it's not going to take that much. I'm basically going to halve all those quantities so we're going to go for two and a half sand to half cement to half lime. I'm also going to add a bit of SBR to the mix today just to make it a bit more workable and give it a bit more adhesion. And here I've got my SBR mixed with water and then I'll add that to the mix slowly. There we go, happy with that. Okay, so we're back in the loft. This is what it looks like the next morning. I'll just give you a close up of this. And you can see now, that's lovely and hard. Because it's fresh as well, it's just perfect to go straight on to. Okay, so I've got my mortar mix here, so I don't want to leave it lying around too long. So the first thing I'm going to do is just scrape off all these rough bits. When you give it a scratch coat, you'll find it carries all these loose bits there. And the way we do this is just get the back of your trowel just run it over the top. It makes a bit of a mess of mine, so you want some sheets then if you're indoors, well, outdoors it helps as well. You can always sweep it up. So just taking the uh, the Marshall turn, I'm just gonna go over it just like that. And it's a good idea to keep your mortar mix out of the way. I almost got all the loose bits in it then. This bit here that I did um, previously, I haven't done it to that either. So make sure you get all the bumps off all the sides of the wall you're rendering. You don't want to get halfway through, stick a blob on, then you find you haven't done it and you get all the bits in your mortar then, it can mess it all up. Next thing to do is either give it a vacuum or you can use a brush to get it all off and then we'll go over with some water. I'm going to use the Henry Hoover, get all the loose bits off down in the edges where they've fallen and then going to go over it with the um, spray water and then I'm probably going to go over it with a brush as well just to saturate the water in. <laughs> So now I'm going to use my spray bottle and spray the wall. And once we've done that, we can start applying the render. I'm using the top of the trowel now to put this coat on is just to get up in the angle because it's so tight it's hard to get this trowel around there so don't be afraid to use any side of the trowel
So for this next bit, you need to just get a float. And it's what you're doing is feeling for if this is going off hard. Now you don't want it rock solid, because obviously this is going to work. But you don't want it wet either. If it's slightly slumping, when you do this, it's going to bring the water back to the surface a bit. So if it's a little bit dry, this can help. If it's too wet, you're just going to make it worse. So make sure you get it just about right. And you want it so you can sort of dent, dent the cement with your finger ever so slightly. But it feels dry almost to the touch. Now the technique we're going to use is circular motions with this for now. Because all this is going to do is sort of flatten the wall in a bit. When you look closely, when you've gone over it and you've leveled it out, you get this very rough or slightly coarse sandy finish. The bits that are obviously lower um, than the other bits, you'll find they're still shiny where they're a bit wet. So what you're aiming to do is get the same finish all over and by doing this you're just slightly taking out the lumps and the bumps and evening out the raised bits and the lower points so that they're, they're all level basically. And then once this is done we can go over it with a sponge end just to get rid of those swirly marks and put a nice little texture on at the end. So I think you can just about pick that up on the camera. You've got rough texture by here and you've got the shiny bit there. If you watch now, I'm going to break this bit down and when we meet this point, this bit should get the slightly rough texture and you know then this bit's level. And the problem I got here is it's extremely hot today as you can see with the sweat dripping off me so this has actually gone off a bit quick. When I was messing around with the corners I probably should have gone over this and then carried on with the rendering but there we go. So you get the general idea, I'll be back in a minute when this is done. Now one good thing with render is, if you get these little low spots and you knock a bit out like that, don't panic, if you've got a bit of your mix, put a little bit on your float like that, and you can just rub it in, like that, leave that to go off for a few minutes, and then you can, I won't do it now because it's going to knock it off, but you basically just put it in the dips, rub over the same like this, and you can fill any slight dips if you need to, using that no problem at all. And if you're doing bits like this, I've got at the top where you're curving it, I mean, really, you've just got to improvise a bit. So rather than floating it like that, just use the, the tip of your of your float. Um, yeah, like, so by here. Mine's coming down here, and I can't get it in. We, we can maybe do that. Slide it down. You've just got to work your way around it with things like that. Obviously, with a flat wall, it's nice and simple, but this one's a bit more difficult, I suppose. Give her a spring, try and pick it back up. So finally get yourself a sponge, dip it in some clean water. And you want to squeeze this out so it's just damp. You don't want it ringing wet. And then what I like to do with this is just nice long strokes. And that way you take out any of those circular marks you've just created with your float. You can also use this sponge while it's wet just to get into the corners and just fill those little gaps where it meets the ceiling or meets a wall. Then go back, give this a rinse and repeat the process. So there we go, that's that bit scratched, final coat floated and sponged down. Now you'll notice on this, like I said earlier, we're not even using the angle bead, I'm trying to get a natural curve on the edge. It's a little bit lumpy at the moment, but I'm going to sort that out now when I do the other coats now. And I do the cement render underneath, I'll patch it up, and I'll round it off with the float, so hopefully we'll just have a nice sort of natural look to the chimney rather than a really straight uh, square edge. So anyway, I'm going to go and do another mix, I'm going to get those on, and I'll show you it when it's finished, because the video is probably dragging on a bit now, so you don't need to see me do that to the rest of it, as you've already seen how it's done, so we'll be back in a minute.
messing up these edges. Now, like we said earlier, if you want a really modern square edge look, then you're better off going with some angle bead. Okay, now you can use the timber, like I showed you earlier in the video, to do straight corners as well. I've kind of used a combination of the two. I've used it to the timber to hold the render in place for the first coat, so I've got something to put the second coat and the, the other angles up to. But because I was after this natural look on the chimney, I want it slightly wavy and to show some signs of what was originally there. Is all I've done is where you've got these um, sort of there's the odd little dip here and there. You get your wet sponge, and if you look at this bit for example, just rub back and forth like that, or you can do circular motions, and you can kind of fill in the gaps. And as long as you don't go too hard, you find yourself just giving it a nice curved edge, and you end up with these slight dips, a bit like you see on them. Um, you know, rendering on old barns and things like that. I want to kind of retain that feature, so that's why I'm doing it. But yeah, just use your sponge, like that, and you can just gently round off the edges. Do the same on this side, and you can see I've just done it there as well. You just go in the dip. So there we go, that's the finished job there, still drying off at the moment. You can see underneath, down that side, this is on top of the one side of the chimney and here's the other side. So that's just how I render my chimney breast. If you've got a better way or a different way of doing this, please let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in any of the tools I used in this video, I'll put a link to all those in the description section below. If you enjoyed the video, then please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon for regular notifications. I've been Pais Around the House. Ta-ta, farewell. <laughs>